Hey guys, it's Tilly and today I'm actually here with a wrap-up video. It wasn't until I was going through my videos on my channel that I realized I haven't done a wrap-up video since December. Maybe that's because I've been in a reading slump on and off for the last five months and even before that. Or perhaps it's the fact that I've just been really terrible at doing videos and all my book life. You decide. So I thought that today I'll be really quick and do a quick wrap-up video, talk about some of my favorite books that I have read so far this year. There are 16 of them in total. I do not have all of them present with me, but I can still talk about them because I do remember the stories. So let's jump straight into it. First of all, we have The Blue Moon Narthex by N.J. Donna. This is a middle grade book and it is a real fun fantasy read. And if you guys are younger, I would very encourage you guys to read this book. You have characters that are very likable and a storyline that is not only entertaining and page turning, but it will keep you interested as well. Can say that there was some part of this book that was confusing and there are a lot of words and names thrown at you that you guys will kind of need to try to get a grasp of, but the world building in it is quite amazing and you feel like you really are part of the story and I think that's really important when it comes to reading. I did do an unboxing and a review of that book which I will leave links to below that includes a Goodreads review too if you guys just want to read about all my thoughts. The next one that I have is The Star Touch Queen by Roshani Chokshi and you guys might be a little upset because I didn't really enjoy this book. I read this book around the time that I read The Wrath and the Dawn and Rebel of the Sands and I was kind of very much into that style of book and when I got to this one I just I couldn't get into the story very much and I really wish I could because I hear so many amazing things about it and maybe I will need to give it another go but just... I just didn't feel it, unfortunately. Next up, I had a historical fiction that I really, really enjoyed, a lot more than I thought I would enjoy, and that is Salt to the Sea by Ruta Sepides. So this book is set in 1945, so it's during the wartime period, and it follows four different teenagers as they all on this one path to pretty much survive this war, and I just remember like some parts of this book were so honestly brutal and heartbreaking to read. Ruta Sepides has this talent when it comes to historical fiction where she can make you feel the destruction and the desperation in those times and reading these books it is real eye-opening and you can just kind of get that insight into what it could have been like during that time and as one of those people in this situation. Next up we have the second book in the Rebel of the Sand series and it is Trade to the Throne by Alwyn Hamilton. These covers are not only stunning with a like gold sparkly look to them but they're also really action-packed and fun to read with characters that you like as well. So this first book is about a girl called Armani who basically wants to escape this little town town she was born in where people don't get treated very nicely and it's just a real crappy place to be living. And one of this foreigner comes in and he's basically her chance to get out of here. So she pretty much piggybacks a ride with him, gets out of that town, but of course it also brings a whole lot of trouble and they have to stay together to try and survive. This next one is a small collection of poetry. It is called Without Mercy by Bethany Helen Lake. And I really did enjoy this book. There are quite a few amazing poems in there that really made you feel something. Then we have Sanctuary's Fien by A. Lynch. This book was really good. It was a quick, short and fun read. And although the very beginning of this story, it was so typical and high schooly that when I was reading it, I was like, how am I going to get through this book? But it quickly changes and things don't always seem like how you would expect. And it was really a pleasant ending to this book. And I just really think more people should read it. So this book is about a young girl called Rel and her life is normal for her, which means that normalcy is going to school at a human school, having a friend that is like a ghost and her adoptive parents are succubi and she thinks she's all good normal she's talking to the boy that she's a crush on until she realizes that she is a vampire so now she must not only execute her new life but she must also try to survive high school. So this next book was a really good mystery read and the writing style in it is absolutely fantastic. I haven't seen much more about it but I'm telling you guys now you need to pick this book up and enjoy it if you guys like that kind of new adult adult mystery kind of genre and that one is If We Were Villains by M.L. Rio. So in this book you have Oliver Meeks who has just served 10 years in jail for a murder he may or may not have committed. So this book jumps back between the future and the past as it reveals the story of what actually happened that night and who was murdered and how they were murdered and who actually did it. So next up we have Night Swimming by Steph Bow, and I absolutely love the cover of this book. So in this you have three friends. You've got Clancy and Kirby. Clancy is basically the boy in the story and Kirby is the female in the story. They've been best friends their entire lives and things just normal and great with them. And then you have a new girl called Iris who strolls into town and both of them end up falling in love with her. So not only is this a love story but it's also like a coming of age story and these two kids trying to figure out what they're going to do for their future and who is going to be in their future. Next up was a real highly anticipated read that if you guys watched my last video would know that I was not a huge fan of and that one is A Quarter Wings and Ruin by Sarah J Maas. This is the third book in the Quarter Thorn and Roses series and it just really really fell flat for me. If you guys haven't heard of the Quarter Thorn and Roses series before it is a high fantasy that is written by Sarah J Maas and most people tend to love her books because she has a real 
good writing style when it comes to these and characters that are you know your typical love lovable characters so you're bound to enjoy it but this one it just Words can't even describe what I'm feeling about this book. I can use my words to describe how much I loved A Ballad for a Mad Girl by Vicki Wakefield. Vicki Wakefield is basically a goddess and an inspiration. Her writing to me is just absolutely amazing and flawless and I love everything about it. So I knew I was going to like this book no matter what, but I really did not expect it to become my new favourite book of hers. I'm going to read the bevel, blurb of this, the bevel, blurb of the bevel, blurb of the bevel story because I've literally just spent the last 20 minutes trying to put the story into a short word sentence, but I cannot form it, so let me just read it off the back. Everyone knows 17 year old Grace Foley is a bit mad. She's not afraid of anything except losing. As part of the feud between two local schools in Swanston, Grace accepts a dangerous challenge. That night she experiences something she can't explain. The funny girl isn't laughing anymore. As she's drawn deeper into the 20 year old mystery of missing girl Hannah Holt, she can no longer tell what's real or imagined. Is she moving closer to the truth, or is she at risk of losing everyone, including herself? And the best part about this is that there isn't romance in this book like there was side character romance but it's never the main plot of the story and I really really enjoyed that about it so if you guys are going to read any books that I have said at all during this I really encourage you guys to pick up this one and for the last book that I physically have here that is released by Patrick Ness I enjoyed this book I think I gave it four stars well, three or four stars it was really good Patrick Ness is an auto buy author for me so I bought this book without even knowing what it was about I must say though that this book alternates between two different characters per se and one of the characters point of view in this I thought was absolutely pointless I'm not entirely sure if it's just because I didn't understand why that point of view was in the book or not but I just didn't enjoy it as much so in this you have the main character called Adam and basically his entire life is changing he has old relationships that he needs to face and new ones that he needs to kind of figure out what he's doing with them plus school is ending and life is moving on and he's really struggling to come to terms with that so it follows him on a day that he makes a lot of big decisions now for books that I don't actually physically have here that will pop up in this corner. So when I was on holiday I finally read The Foxhole Court by Nora Sakavik. I don't actually have the book here so I don't even know if that's how you pronounce her last name correctly. I do recall really really enjoying these books. Um, the basic plot line of this is that you have this sport. I can't actually remember what the name of the sport is but it's a made up sport that's like a cross between like hockey and rugby and like all those other really rough sports and at this school you get a boy called Neil who gets recruited to play in this sport and he basically meets all these new players and teammates and you follow them as they continue to play this sport and become friends. That's a really really bad way to describe it but it is a very heavy dark and emotional book. It deals with a lot of issues and it was so much more than I expected it would be but I still thoroughly enjoyed it. Second last book that I have read is One Day by David Nichols. I got this book from my friend and I really did enjoy reading this book. It was a lot better than I expected it would be. I hadn't watched the movie yet so maybe that was a good thing but I read this book and I just remember crying at certain points and like I did not expect that ending. It just wasn't very fair. Like, I kind of got it from the beginning what would happen, but I didn't pick it, you know? I didn't see it coming. It is a real romance book between two friends and their stories as they entwine over the years. And it was just really, really good. And for the last book that I have read this year, it is The Tender Wings of Desire. Now, the funny thing about this book is that it was a novella released by KFC uh, for Mother's Day to just promote whatever the hell they're promoting. Chicken, I guess. And I was at work and I thought, hey, I've got time. Why don't I just read this? book and see how it is. I was basically expecting the biggest shit post of a book that has puns and just disappointing chicken lines all throughout it. But it was actually a half decent real cringy romance novel and I didn't sit well with that so I went and wrote a review which actually turned into me rewriting the entire story which I'll leave a link to below but let me just say that it is quite embarrassing and a little raunchy but hey. It's finger licking good. So there you guys have the books that I have read so far in 2017 and hopefully I'll be reading a lot more but <laughs> I'm me, I don't know what my brain's doing. It's like one day I want to read a book and the next day I don't want to do anything at all. But we can all win so I'm going to leave this video here. You guys can let me know if you have read these books what your thoughts are or if you're going to be picking up any of these books, most specifically Ballad for a Mad Girl by Vicky Wakefield. Hope that you guys have enjoyed this video and I shall see you guys again soon and yeah, have a lovely bookish day and bye!